to free your mind. <laughs> well, I expect to blow it. <laughs> All right. Well, there is this thing we have been talking about, the awakening, the awareness. We are coming into a new uh, enlightenment stage and the world is starting to freak out. <laughs> and so I'm hoping that many of us have now reached a level where we're about to be able to calm the reaction of the people as they have start to become aware of how strange life on planet Earth actually is. Now, people think they know something when they've figured out 9-11. <laughs> they don't know anything yet. <laughs> My awareness began when I drew a, a, a picture at 10 years old, and I had no idea what I was drawing at this time. It was this little picture up here. I drew it at 10 in elementary school. 
On this picture, I drew the flying space shuttles all there, fighting a flying serpent with some strange, uh, what I thought was a spiral galaxy in the center. And I put this symbol on each of the space shuttles. I, I, I really wanted something cool on there. I really wanted to say, OK, this is the coolest symbol ever. And I drew that little curved line and straight line. And what was that? But I went ahead and I put it on all of them. Well, lo and behold, 18 years later, this data all of a sudden made sense. Now, how I came upon this is some perhaps remote viewing technical skills that children pick up. And I believe that I had a genetic predisposition for this information. You see, my family's wrapped up in this. I'm not saying that they're Illuminati, high occult worshipers, or anything like that. But I have Freemasons going back my whole life. My father was worshipful master. Uh, my mother was Esther in the Eastern Star. I'd say things to my mom like, well, you know, the Pope's a Bavarian Illuminati from uh, uh, a Nazi youth Bavarian Illuminati. And she's like, well, I was a Nazi youth in Bavaria, you know. <laughs> what are you going to do? And it's your mom. <laughs> I love her. You know? She's not evil, not even close. So yeah, I managed to keep a balanced view as I looked at things, but then found a very strange perspective that I hope to rifle through and show you. So genetic memory is something that we know exists. Uh, you put owls up on top of buildings to scare off birds because they're frightened of owls, even if it's plastic. And in the same way, genetic triggers are being used against us. And I'm going to show you some of these. But we've now reached a point where life could be immortal and we could travel the stars. And the elite know this. They've gone deep into cloning technologies, bring about immortality. They make glow-in-the-dark pigs and bunnies for your pleasure so that you can have them. And these glow-in-the-dark animals that have genetically been crafted also reproduce glow-in-the-dark animals. So in the same way that a chick uh, knows the, the predator straight out of the egg, never having seen one, we know this as well. Now in my picture, I just decided to give you a little background on it. When I drew this, I really had no idea what I was doing. But as I began to understand things in the true history of planet Earth, as I'll give you today, uh, I found that each of these things actually had meaning. And what I thought was a spiral galaxy in the center turned out to be a craft that was filmed by the space shuttle Columbia in what's known as the tether experiment. And you can go look at this, or it's on my videos. What I also found out is that as I drew these lines in here, and I remember really taking my time and putting that in there, uh, David Serrata came out studying the ASTS 75 tether experiment uh, film and came up with hyperdimensional physics from the spirals coming out of it. Well, yeah, there I was with the hyperdimensional spirals at 10 years old. And on top of this, this little notch you see right here is the exact same little notch that was on the craft. Now, I drew this years and years before that film was ever made. I don't know where it comes from. Paul Lafley, another interesting study into spirals and time control. Uh, I sat there with him for a number of hours, and oh my god, that guy will blow your mind. I have it all up on YouTube. So welcome to the Freeman Perspective. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to change everything you think you know. And hopefully I can do this, and if not, you just go to freemantv.com, and uh, I have 700 hours or more. You could fill your brain full of the craziest stuff you've ever seen. Have you ever wondered why we live, or our capital is the District of Columbia, and why uh, we have this fish goddess on our coffee cups, uh, and what all the obelisk symbolism and, and merfolk uh, come into this puzzle. I have always been the merfolk guy where David Icke was the reptilian guy, and it turns out we're both right. Now, my awakening really to coming to the reality of where we're at on planet Earth was the Y2K situation. Now, I was telling people, I was feeding them pizza at the time and telling them all about harp and uh, all the crazy things I knew about at that time, and of course discussing the whole Y2K meltdown. But I had a few more pieces of this puzzle, and I kept telling people, no, look, the computer meltdown's one thing. I mean, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? <laughs> Shut down all the banks, no more debt? Yeah, bring it on. You know, EMP, I don't care. Computer meltdown is not as dangerous as an EMP. Well, I said, this is all one thing for you, you know, that, yeah, there could be this major meltdown, but for me, that'd be the greatest uh, boon to humanity. We could all then become friends and quit going off to work and doing all the stupid things that we do, wasting all this great potential. But they're capping the Great Pyramid with gold. And, <laughs> and people look at me like, well, so? I'm like, 
have you not ever looked at your dollar bill? You see that pyramid floating in the, the cap of the eye, just floating there above the pyramid, it says Novo Ordo Seclorum, or the New World Order. Well, when they cap that thing, that's the completion of this project. And, and they're capping the Great Pyramid with gold for Y2K. Okay, yeah, whatever, Freeman. <laughs> You're going to be in a bunker, aren't you? I know you are. Well, lo and behold, they go through this whole ritual at, at the, the Great Pyramids and all across the globe. And I've got this whole thing documented in my first uh, DVD where you can see the entire ritual of Y2K. And every nation across the globe doing an occult ritual to Lucifer and to the ancient gods of Egypt, which kind of roll in together. So out in front of the pyramids, we had the men in black standing there and Anubis heads. And that's the god of the underworld, the one that leads the dead. We had... Um, the Egyptian Flight 990 that had took this crazy crash right into the ocean and the, the pilot called out a Muslim prayer. But this was before terrorist programming, so they said it was pilot suicide. Uh, you might want to look into the Egyptian Flight 990. They had 33 Egyptian military and the head scientist of Jet Propulsion Laboratory on board when they decided to take a nosedive into the ocean. But what it really clued me in was Bill Clinton. And the thing that happened was Bill Clinton was pulled out in front of the public for an extramarital affair. Oh my God, he had inserted a cigar in his secretary. And they were going to tell about it on news. This is the moment they mentioned it. And this is the moment poor Bill Clinton had to be in front of millions of people as they asked him, did you insert a cigar into Monica Lewinsky? And he turned purple. You know, he's like, I, I need a bathroom break, I need a bathroom break. This poor fellow. Okay, when I saw that moment, I said, they don't do this to our presidents. There's no way that this will happen to a president. They cover this stuff up. They don't bring it out into public view. This is psychological warfare on humanity. And at this moment, I was clued into a puzzle. And I laid down a foundation at that moment that has proven true now for 12 years. My hypothesis has not been proven wrong. What I had seen was that if they were going to take down the man, the saxophone-loving uh, David Letterman sitting uh, president, the man of the people down for an extramarital affair when this guy's been dealing drugs and mean in Arkansas, they've been running all the cocaine everywhere, death of children on your train tracks, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, no, uh-uh, psychological warfare. So I, I, I just extrapolated what I thought would occur after that. I said, okay, if they're, gonna for if they're gonna bring the man down, the next thing they do is force a man into office. Because first thing of all, well, this is my dad and, and all of his connections. Uh, once you've got the man taken down, then that's, that's affecting all of us because we focus on our icons, our idols, and our celebrities, and we believe in it and relate with them. And so now the biggest man in our country is being taken down for something that most people have done themselves, and it's just a psychological attack on you. So the next stage of that would be then to force a man into office. And I said, you know, that will be what will happen. The next president will be forced in. Now, during Clinton's time, I was watching the Homeland Security Act. Now, this was coming up to Bill every October during the Bill Clinton era. Who knows that? So I continually waited for the middle of September to have a massive terrorist attack so that they could pass this thing in October. But it never happened. Every September uh, during Clinton's era, it was like, they're going to do it this year. I know they are. And they didn't. Oh, they're going to do it this year. And they didn't. I had predicted 9-11 three years before it happened. At first, I was set on the middle of the month because I knew the bill came October 1st. You need a couple of weeks for public reaction time. So September 15th, somewhere around there. Then I started to focus on the symbolism and the understanding of the occult. And I realized that here's H.W. mentioning uh, the New World Order for the first time publicly on 9-11. Had I known that the cornerstones of the Twin Tower and the cornerstones of the Pentagon were both dated to 9-11 as well, I probably would have picked the buildings. Because at that moment, I became focused on the occult side of it, the number, numerological, numerology uh, of, these, of this uh, number, and was able to say that this was going to occur. But it didn't. It didn't happen. So I kept waiting. Uh, I was going to get into all of the genealogical and uh, genetic connections to all of the families and how that genetic bloodline comes down and why these people are the ones that seem to be in contact with otherworldly beings. I believe it's a genetic trait. It comes through once they get into the occult and they start to get raised in their rituals. Then they have particular bloodlines that go back to Vlad the Impaler, also known as Dracula. And uh, you wonder why these guys are vampires. 
You know, they're, they're not hiding this from us. They're, they're telling us, look, you know, Hillary's related to Madonna. She's related to Angelina Jolie and Mo Barack, if you believe it. He's related to Brad Pitt and George Bush and Dick Cheney. <laughs> you know, he's related to Britney Spears. And they're ready to, to show you how this bloodline actually rule and stand below, stand above you. But as you start to look a little deeper, like I said, they come from the secret line of vampires, or Vlad the Impaler, as we follow him all the way through. But would you believe that that is Aleister Crowley's granddaughter? One look will tell you that this is probably true. Uh, she looks very much like Mr. Aleister Crowley, and I imagine you're all familiar with the wickedest man in the world. And had a cult, okay. Well, so... As we get into the bloodlines, we start to realize that these bloodlines have come down and there's secret passage and secret ways of them getting the particular bloodlines in. Uh, Alistair Crowley's, or, uh, Barbara Bush's mom, Pauline Pierce, went off to France with Alistair Crowley and performed one of his rituals. <laughs> if you're at all familiar with their rituals, then you wouldn't be at all surprised that she came back pregnant. Because OTO is all sex. It's all sexual rituals. And you're in that magical order, you know, be ready. <laughs> don't bend over if you don't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, she came back pregnant, but they couldn't announce that this uh, lady had, uh, had Alistair Crowley's child. But sure enough, and she comes along to give the grandson to the beast, uh, W, to us. Now, they go around and they give you all their satanic hand signs, and I gotta say, George doesn't always get his right. <laughs> Now, they had intended for you to think of him as an idiot. He was actually very eloquent and, and smart speaking when he first came into office, but you can see a CIA document on how to make people look stupid so that you can get a dictator into po out power without anybody worrying. Oh, he's just the good old boy, don't worry about him. Yeah. Well, his very name, W, had significance to me. And, uh, of course, yeah. And, uh, of course, him too. Uh, <laughs> And this guy, too. Um, we'll get to W's name. His name, Barack Obama, is it? A.K.A. Barry Satoro, A.K.A. Barry Dunham. He has 26 uh, uh, Social Security numbers. You can now pay $100 in Hawaii to get a copy of his, path, or his birth certificate, but yet it still won't have that seal. Uh, we've seen now just recently, if you guys caught the view, I don't know if you're into that, but Donald Trump on there being a birther saying, Barack Obama, show your birth certificate. Well, Donald Trump's birth certificate is fraudulent as well. <laughs> this was part of the puzzle, though. See, I had realized that after W would be forced into office, and then the next thing to occur would be that the next president would be ineligible. So first they took down the man, then they took down the system by forcing a president in, and then they made it obvious by saying, oh, it was Jeb Bush, you know, poor old Jeb back there in Florida fixing the roads. Uh, that's the conspiracy they wanted you to be angry about. They fed that to us and said, here, they had this intended when they named W and HW, and I'll get to that stuff. But then the next part of the puzzle was that the next president needed to be ineligible in order to force a constitutional convention so that they can finally get that Masonic document out of the way that has uh, laid the foundation for people believing in their civil liberties and rights. They need that gone. And so they've been working on that, working on that, trying to get the Constitutional Convention going on, but no one's ready to, you know, they've gotten a number of states to sign on, on simple problems. And then when they do, this opens the Constitution to all revision. And so the idea of an ineligible president is exactly what they need to get you to agree to allow them to change the Constitution so that these other people, you've heard of the Arnold Bill, so that old Arnold Schwarzenegger and Will Smith can run. Uh, that's how the system is played. So there are more levels to this. I had predicted 9-11 truth. I had said, yeah, look, seriously, uh, don't freak out. Uh, this is all for your reaction. And I had a, a, a line of people at my door going, how did you know? How did you possibly know? Because I told everyone I knew, there's going to be a major terrorist attack on 9-11. Don't freak out. This is all for your reaction. If I can predict it, it's planned. And I'll show you how many predictions I've made. And you can go back and double check my homework and even the dates on my website and see that I'm ahead of the game. Uh, Barack Obama, the very words mean lightning from heaven in Aramaic, in the language of Jesus, the name Barack Obama is the words used to describe Satan in the Bible. 
That's not his name. He's Barry Satoro, Barry Dunham, or maybe not. Maybe he's something else. But Barack Obama? No, he's not. And of course, Satan's one of Satan's favorite toys is a reverse masking. You know, you've listened to Led Zeppelin and uh, Kiss or whatever. They got the back masking. So uh, uh, Barack Obama's got a little one of his own. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. Yes, we can reverse. We're gonna spread happiness. We're gonna spread freedom. I noticed their shirt saying, Imagine hope. Obama's gonna change <laughs> it. Obama's gonna lead them. We're gonna change it. Yes, we can. And rearrange it. Thank you, Satan. We're gonna change the world. I'll spare you. This is I'm all singing Yes We Can, and all I did was flip it. Alright, I think you get the idea. Now, the whole thing was that there is a scheduled plan, a schedule of World War III, of getting everybody backed and getting you into it. And part of this plan was to get the Christians and, and uh, Muslims in fighting, and also the Zionists and Muslims, and the Christians and atheists fighting. And so Barack Obama disallowed anyone to come on the prayer in his inauguration and use the name of Jesus Christ. So every time the minister would get up there to say the prayer at the inauguration, and there were three of them, they would say, in the name of the Lord of all nations. Well, who's that? <laughs> if I remember correctly, I think it was Satan, right? <laughs> Gave Jesus the nation, said, here, I'll give it all to you if you serve me. Uh, so the, he got the first minister. Then there was a gay minister that came up and gave his uh, inaugural speech and prayer, and he had to invoke the God of many understandings. Yes. <laughs> and they were disallowed to use the word Jesus Christ in any of the, the proceedings with Barack Obama. And then if you remember, he flubbed his inaugural oath. Once again, ineligible, ineligible. Getting back up. You've got to make sure, you know, if the birther thing doesn't happen, we've got to have this thing too, you know. So he flubs his oath, and he's taken off into a secret building later, and he's given the oath again behind locked doors. He comes out and says, well, I forgot my Bible, but the oath still stands. And you can go look that up. You know? So the whole play is actually a play, and it's there to, to make you react and to make Christians fight an atheist. They're making Christians look stupid on television, so the atheists have their fire, and they're making sure everybody can fight. <laughs> and that's the program. So as they set up this whole situation, they, of course, uh, got their binding spirits. And if you happen to notice that when you fold your five through your hundred in a very specific way, all of them actually depict the Twin Towers crashing at the moments that they happen. Now, the thing is, I predicted 9-11, and I had those dozen people in my doorway going, how did you know? And I was going, know what? What are you talking about? I didn't have television or a calendar. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, it took me a week to actually see the planes hit the towers. But they, three of the people in line already had their bills folded up. I'm like, that's too weird. How do you know that? Because they're not conspiracy theorists, you know? And sure enough, it was all over the internet. Because these guys like you to know their rituals. They like to, you to know their magic. And they want you to think about it. And they want to bring it out into your attention. Oops. I guess I probably turned them. Well, so in doing so, they have uh, illuminated themselves all over the place. And as you start to notice, every single corporate logo that you see of a major corporation is actually a part of a Masonic ritual. Every single one that I have on here, I can identify in the Mason ritual. Uh, certain things that are, are slightly uh, less known, uh, when you go into a Masonic lodge and you're, you're, you're bound and you've got your pant leg rolled up and your sleeve pulled off, your chest is bared, I think there's people in here that know what I'm talking about. Uh, and, you know, they stick a sword on your chest and tell you to walk in. And 
you go into your ritual and you're blindfolded, you've got a noose around your neck, and they're going to lead you around and bring you through this death and resurrection ritual of Hiram Abiff. Now, when you do this, you circle around the altar a number of times, and this actually mathematically works out as the canted square. And this is, by Pythagorean standards, a symbol of Christ, or a symbol of the resurrected one. Uh, their Messiah may not be the same Messiah as everyone that thinks of. But so you'll see many of these canted squares, and those are an absolute clue. We've got some that are just blatant, like the compass and square with the G in the middle. The cube is what a mason wants to make himself. He comes in as a rough ashlar and wants to make himself a, a, a perfect ashlar. And, and of course, just your pyramids and, and many others, uh, we could go on. And I have this all on the website on Freeman TV so that you can check it all out for yourself. You'll see truncated capped pyramids. Uh, the W, the pentagram, is actually a very uh, important symbol. And then you, know, you think about all the times you've seen things that go back to the Garden of Eden and the serpent. Uh, I'll show you a bunch. Uh, given a, a very simple example, the, the letter V in Hebrew looks just like this, right? Uh, the letter V in Hebrew is the number six. <laughs> Do the math. <laughs> right? 666, six, six, of course. Well, the very symbolism of W as well, when I looked into it, and this is when I started to realize, when, when, I, when I came into my understanding of the program, I said, okay, they're going to force a president into office, and then I start hearing about this W, W. And I just happened to be doing my corporate logo study and had come across Philip 66. Now, I'd identified everything from McDonald's to Walmart, and I didn't know what 66 stood for or what it meant. So, but everything else fit into the same pattern, which is that Freemasonry is Kabbalism, which is an ancient Hebrew mysticism. So everything needs to be translated back to Hebrew and to understand the symbolism. So as soon as I looked up 66 in the Kabbalistic dictionary, simple enough, it's the number of the fallen angels. It's also known as excrement. <laughs> And it's the, the number of, the, of those that have died insane. It is the goddess, goddess, and gods like Lilith and Samael, all the demons you've ever heard of, they are symbolized by this number, 66. And then you might notice that there's six points on the crest, and you'll find the same thing with Highway 66, which is the first military road across. This symbol, actually, then, if you break it down, you'll see that the Volkswagen logo, now that was Hitler's vehicle for the people, to free the people, right? And that was the whole deal of Hitler. You'll see the VW is actually two Vs interlaced. So what you have, again, is 66, the fallen angels, the excrement, or 666, once you cross the three. But it's actually a 66 to begin with. Same with what you see with Woodrow Wilson behind W. And this is the very symbol of 666. Also, what is known as the Klebot, which took me forever to figure out how to say that. So people are looking for Satan, and it's everywhere around them, and I don't know what to say about all of that. I am not particularly a biblical Christian or a Christian. I don't know what I am, you know. <laughs> so my life is so strange and so weird that uh, I haven't been able to choose a religion yet. But... I will find yeah, yeah, 666s and all of this everywhere. You make your own choices as to what it means. Uh, and in 2001, this was my very first artwork. And what you're going to be seeing in here are a lot of my artworks that I combined so that you can, I can make a point very quickly. This I made in 2001. This is a poster I put up all over the, after 9-11 happened, and I knew I was right. But you'll see that I had the Space Command seal sitting over the Twin Towers. This is because I knew there was something more to 9-11 than simple demolition. There were, these buildings fell faster than free fall speed. There's no way. They were particulated, you know? There's no way. So I knew that space race and the space war was the next major thing on the platform. So I threw the ISS up there. I got HARP over here, the solar flares that we're dealing with now as we enter solar cycle 24. And that's going to be crazy this year, guys. Expect a very hot summer. Uh, 2000 was the last time. Uh, 2000 was the last time that the solar fl flares reached their maximum, and uh, you know, it got 114 degrees in Kansas. What they're doing to us now is getting us ready for this, this transition, and so they want to create dark heroes, and they want to make all of your heroes now slasher, killer, psychopaths. Hmm. So they killed off Superman, and the death of Superman, he was actually replaced by six clones. 
And the main clone that they used in the furthering stories of Superman actually was dressed all in black with guns. <laughs> what does Superman need with guns, right? But Superman kind of died off because nobody really took to the clones, and uh, they, they turned instead to Hellspawn whose evil villains are actually rapist pedophiles that he fights. So if your children are reading Hellspawn, you know, realize what they're getting. Batman, at the same time Superman's dying, gets his back breaking, and he's replaced by another man, and he's known as Azrael. Well, guess what? That's one of the 66. That's one of the fallen angels. Azrael's the one that taught warfare to mankind in the Book of Enoch. Everybody's turned on to V for Vendetta. If you guys really understood, this is written about Aleister Crowley and Adam Weishaupt of the Illuminati. Read the comic, don't see the movie, realize what the true message behind this is, and you'll, you'll understand and you won't want to dress up like Guy Fox anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> in the way that this is all integrated into our culture, once you start to realize and you watch Batman episode number 33, you're going to find out that Batman's grandfather actually founded Skull and Bones. Yeah, there we have old John Kerry. Right? Bonesman number one, Bonesman number two, take your pick. What an election that was, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? John, uh, John Kerry, George Bush, you know? Skull and Bones one or two, which do you want? And then Ra's al Gore. <laughs> this was a comic book character who always wanted to come up with the ultimate virus and just kill everything on planet Earth. But as you walk down your store aisles, your children are now being conditioned into this new fighting mode. And what it is is a princess warrior programming. And they want your warrior to be a clone, a drone, or uh, something vile. And then the princesses, of course, have no mothers, no mother aspect, no connections to mothers whatsoever. And as you're walking down your store aisle, you got your pink side, and you got your little uh, everybody getting their Hannah Montana princess programming. I mean, there's more Hannah Montana products than the Queen has pictures. It's insane. We decided to go and see how many Hannah Montana products we could find. We had three shopping carts full before we ever made it around the corner. And that's all different Hannah Montana products, by the way. <laughs> and so our poor children are getting corrupted into the concepts that are being bombarded into them, especially by Walt Disney. Now, cars really was a film that taught children subservience to the court and uh, subservience to, to the higher order. And actually was one of the first, w back in the early chemtrail studies, I've been watching chemtrails since 96 and talking about them since then, uh, we were always looking for them in movies. When were they going to show up in movies? You see, they used to be rare. <laughs> we used to have to hunt chemtrails and try to figure it out. Now it's like, God, don't send me another picture, you know? Uh, but cars actually had chemtrails in their animation. And Walt Disney is one of the most evil corporations out there. So now you don't even have to go out to some OTO ritual or anything. You just tune into American Idol and you get your blood rituals all day long. No problem. Uh, this is going back to the Scarlet Woman, which is part of the uh, Revelation Armageddon script. And so this is what Lady Gaga is fulfilling now that Britney had her meltdown. You see, they couldn't use Britney in her rituals anymore. If you listen to Arizona Wilder, she says, well, I turned my hair brown. That wasn't good enough, so I had to shave my head. When you go look at what Brittany did, what she do? Dye it brown, shave her head. I got a whole two and a half hour film on that if you want to get into the darkness of this. Uh, but we'll cover it. A burning Lucifer, a, a burning angel upon the stage of American Idol as uh, Lady Gaga goes through a blood ritual at prime time where children are watching. This is all intentional. Pink, dressed up full Masonic garb, just as I had told you. The pant leg, although not rolled up, is uh, the checkerboard floor of a Masonic lodge. She has her breast bared, as they do, as they enter the initiation. She's hoodwinked, and then eventually, I think she even had, well, maybe that took place of the, the noose around her neck. But you can see clearly that it's identical to what you go through in a Masonic ritual. But I don't think that enough of you know about this for them to believe that you know what they're doing. So that's a very interesting question for me as to why they are putting pink in Masonic rituals. But of course, I have covered these high-profile rituals pretty in-depth in depth and, uh, you know, Freeman TV, it's all free. But when we start to look at the symbolism and everything else in Disney, oh my God, how evil they are, you realize that all of the ones that they're using, like Justin Timberlake and, uh, and Christina Aguilera in the Super Bowl mishap, right? The bared breast, once again. That's a symbol of the goddess, and she had a golden sundial on her nipple. That's a symbol of the god, or the hermaphrodite is what they're pushing for. 
and you realize that each and every one of these kids is Mouseketeers. Okay? If you look to the logo of Village Roadshow that put out V for Vendetta, put out, I think, the Matrix, six Bs, once again. All right? You look at CNN's logo backwards, and uh, I believe Disney Co. actually owns CNN, I'm not sure, but there we got the WD. But if you were to take that into Kabbalistic form and say this is Hebrew, then the VVD would actually be the door of the sorcerers, or the sorcerer's door, because D in Hebrew it means door, or Dalet, or Dallas. You see clearly the 666 symbolism once again, you know, the art of Disney is, is nefarious, you guys. You must realize this. When they're saying we're capturing your imagination, making new memories, they mean it. <laughs> Okay, it was, it was Walt Disney that taught the Nazis how to do propaganda, <laughs> all right? Walt Disney, you can go check out uh, Disney on the front lines. It's their wartime propaganda. And Joseph Goebbels found out that Disney really got to have Donald Duck to pay everyone, everyone to pay their taxes. And he said, damn, <laughs> Disney, hey. But of course, they're all connected at the upper elite. Uh, the Nazis, the Freemasons, they are all there together and they socialize and they share information and this is a global conspiracy. So if you get yourself locked down in just the what America's doing or just that, you're not getting the whole puzzle because these guys are global. Well, I'll tell you, it was Walt Disney and they admitted that Walt Disney taught the Nazis how to do propaganda. And he came out with, uh, he was an order of de Molay, which is the Boy Scouts of Freemasonry, one of the original knights in Kansas City. And he wanted to create Project X, or the first experimental prototype civilization of tomorrow, or what some people might call the Venus Project, or the Lucifer Project. Now, when you walk into old Project X there, Epcot, the first thing you're going to do well, after you give them your credit card information is to uh, assign your fingerprint to that credit card. Then they're going to take you and put you in this big ball. Now, if you want to, you can pay and have your face and name <laughs> biometrics and everything engraved on titanium outside. <laughs> if you're just you know, not sure about the solar flare taking out your database or something, you can have it all engraved right there. But once you get inside of this ball, they tell you exactly how they programmed you into the reality that you're dealing with, and they also then take your picture and ask you where you're from, and, and then you can watch your photo go right to your hometown. Disney is military industrial complex. Every single ride, this ride right here is sponsored by Siemens. Okay, go look at your Auschwitz pictures and see what corporate logo is over Auschwitz. All right, now we've got new planners, new people coming along for our new Epcots, our new uh, experimental prototype civilizations of tomorrow. Would you guys even let this guy babysit your kid? <laughs> not one bit, right? But yeah, we're going to let him create our reality because whether you know it or not, Henry Kissinger outlined the whole program of having 10 UN regions in America uh, overlorded by governors. And if you don't know this yet, Barack Obama just uh, signed an executive order to create those governors. So this is right around the corner. Meanwhile, old Henry Kissinger is hanging out with uh, Richard Nixon getting this whole situation, but now he's gone into Astana and Canberra. Uh, Canberra and has, has actually created this new experimental prototype civilization of tomorrow. Canberra is one of the very first uh, planned cities, pre-planned cities. And if you start to study your occult symbolism as uh, she was telling you of the seals of Solomon, well, that's a seal of Solomon to bind spirits. Now notice the little curves, notice the curves, notice the, this coming off into the pentagram. This is actually a star chart and gets much deeper if you study it. Now you see the same curves, same curves you'll see, and then there's an obelisk with the pentagram and the very same symbolism. But it's not just Canberra. Now this is Australia. And what we have with Canberra is they're set up as the global uh, connection. They have Echelon there. They have uh, the uh, Pine Gap. And they are the intermediary of all the data. So they all, everything gets sucked into Australia and then shipped back out. Then we have Astana. Now this is Kazakhstan. And the curious thing is that each of these cities that I'm naming have gone extraterrestrial. Each one of them is now launching rockets into space. Well, you come walking into Astana and you're going to be astonished. Now, Astana means threshold. It's the, uh, 
It's the way through, whereas Canberra meant meeting place. Uh, the threshold here, actually, you have to walk through. Uh, you know, you've got your twin column symbolism that you'll see in all your Masonic lodges, your eye in the pyramid over the capital. Uh, but as you enter Astana, you've got to walk through the pyramid of peace first. And this is where they hold the World Congress of Religions. And what they have is a giant gold sundial table for everybody to go sit around. And I'll tell you, I've read the list, and they're almost all Muslim. But here, they have designed this pyramid to be the pyramid of peace. And you can see the difference between what it's like, the one in Paris, and you know, how big it is. And Astana also has tried to now uh, declare that they were going to come out with the single currency for the world, which they call ACK metal. Uh, which means supreme quality. But they're designing these cities to be set up just as sigils or seals of Solomon's magic, a sorcerer who dabbled in the magic of Shamash and Ishtar. You can find all of this in the Bible. You can find it in your extra-biblical studies. And this is one of his main seals. He had uh, managed to conjure 72 demons and then control them all with, the, with a particular sigil. And it was this one right here. Now, this happens to be the Bicentennial Mall out in front of Nashville. And it's, uh, they spent millions and millions of dollars on this. No one goes there. I've got a, a Esoteric Adventures in Nashville film. You can check it all out. It's amazing uh, what's actually in here and uh, describe it all for you. But you'll see that the symbolism is the exact same. I could lay this on top of Astana, and it would be the exact same symbolism. Now, these guys have always had a bit of the occult behind them and the ancient knowledge, and somehow they seem to have grasped things long before anyone else. Perhaps it's that genetic memory again, or perhaps they had help. But there was a man known as Heron back in Rome who was able to build uh, computers, well, not as we know them, but uh, with gears and levers and ropes that would work on steam power. And he actually came up with the steam engine in ancient Rome. But he would use the steam engine to open the... the uh, the temple doors so that the, the inhabitants actually think that, oh my God, the God indwells in this building. Look at the doors open on their own. And in the same way, they're going to uh, lead us in that way by their crafting of flying saucers and then coming out and saying, hey, we're under attack by aliens. Now, the truth is, Earth has probably been visited many, many, many times by many races. And if you study exopolitics, we're up to 57 races that have visited planet Earth or are here at this time. Now, there are things we cannot explain in our ancient past. The, the megalithic stones of Baalbek, Lebanon, that's a person standing on there. We do not, in the 21st century, have the technology to move that. We can't do it, but yet there it stands. That's from ancient Lebanon, say, 5,000 years ago. Uh, you know, dating these things is, oh, uh, we got a new science coming out that's going to start to allow us to date these things, and that's going to be incredible. But we can see in many of the ancient structures and any of the ancient ways that the, the extraterrestrials have shown themselves. Wow, that's too fast. All right, so uh, when we start to look at the, the races in charge of planet Earth, we actually come to Alpha Draconis and Sirius, and one symbolized by the reptile and the other one by the merfolk or the fish people. And this has been the case since day one. You can go back into the ancient studies of this. And we find that the very descriptions of these races, according to exopolitics, now I'll tell you, exopolitics didn't put this picture together, I did. They just let put out the descriptions, and I said, well, wait. <laughs> I think that uh, controlling militaries and systems of struggle and scarcity sound like the city of London to me, and participating in ex ex uh, technology exchanges. Well, you might not know this, but the Vatican sent their Jesuit priest over to CERN to join in and he's the one that was saying aliens are our space brothers and don't suffer original sin. Uh, now he's working for CERN, right? All right? Realize who these people are. Okay, so I finally came down to the puzzle and I realized what was going on here a bit. And I realized that we were going to start a space war at this point. And I have a section on my website called Space War News. I decided to track Obama from the moment he said he would not weaponize space to the moment he did. <laughs> and it has happened. And what had happened was I said they're going to use an asteroid. And the reason I knew this is Warner Von Braun had said they're going to use the Red Scare, terrorism, asteroids, and aliens to bring in this new world order. And so I said, okay, they're going to bring in an asteroid and say there's an asteroid coming to destroy planet Earth. 
Right after I said that, lo and behold, they announced there's an asteroid coming towards planet Earth that's going to hit us on Friday the 13th, 2029. And its name is Apophis. Now, if you don't know, Apophis is the serpent deity of destruction, or Satan, of Akhenaten's religion. Now, Akhenaten came in, Sigmund Freud thinks he's Moses, he came in and disturbed all of Egypt and started monotheism. Now, he was a bit bizarre with a cone head and uh, you know hermaphroditic body. Uh, actually, when they found his mummy, they couldn't determine whether it was male or female, but that quickly went into national security secret. I'll tell you why. But lo and behold, next thing we know, the, the space war is on. They launched the X-37B, the secret military automated space shuttle, and they just launched it again just now. Uh, up there now, doing whatever it does, they won't tell us. And on one coast, in Florida, they launched the X-37B. In California, they launched the HTV-2. Both at the same time, same day. Or not same time, but same day. And uh, this one had some more problems than they expected and didn't get off the uh, ground like they expected. But lo and behold, next thing we know, some strange things are occurring around planet Earth. And I get very deep into the Norway spiral. And if you want to understand this, uh, I think I have the best data, the best understanding of what went on because I was tracking these uh, aluminum oxide clouds that rockets were launching up in the atmosphere, and you'll see that there have been many spiral rockets that have gone up. This one just is much more bizarre because it had a harp array, or ice cat, that was uh, pulsing it. For what reasons, I don't know. But at this very moment, uh, CERN had turned up to full power. And on top of that, CERN's logo is 666. Uh, this was just a moment before Barack Obama showed up in Norway to get his Nobel Peace Prize for extraordinary effort. <laughs> Meanwhile, over in satellite displays, we start to see, and I had mentioned on the air that people were going to start to see things over Australia, and lo and behold, like uh, I think it was three days later, this thing pops up in the satellite relay, and uh, this is a harp array in Australia. It's the Boeing VLF array, and uh, you can see that this is exactly where it's located. Uh, and they are manipulating the weather patterns with these technologies. But the weather patterns aren't only being manipulated electronically, and it's not all HARP. And every time somebody says HARP caused this earthquake, I say, well, what about Sura? What about ISCAT? What about Japan's HARP? What about all the ionosphere caters all over the globe? The purpose right now is to focus everybody's attention on America. Look at America. They're Satanists. They're horrible. They're brief. They're, you know, they're brats. And they're turning all our children into such, and so the rest of the world will agree when they take out the fourth right. But there might be other doomsday scenarios coming on, and uh, there's been lots of talk of a second sun. And if you get into the esotericism, you'll find out they always talk about a second sun. And it turns out we might be in a bi binary star system, and the second star is hurtling toward us at this moment. And you might just happen to notice that the star, G1.9, uh, looks just like the Firefox logo. And you might realize then that uh, this is causing the solar flare activity, that there is a massive body coming in, and this is causing many of, of much of the chaos and pulling the sun apart and doing gravitational fluxes, causing the, what was already going to be something bad to make even worse. And there's the potential of Comet Elenin, which is coming in now and will be in May, and could be very scary, or it could just be very beautiful. Uh, it depends on what happens, but Comet Elenin is coming in very fast. Now, we've had many people talking about time travel and the eruption and how they can get through these things. Well, have you noticed that the, the entire staff of Barack Obama happened to be characters on Stargate, <laughs> including Obama <laughs> as Apophis? All right. But I had other thoughts about Apophis. Next week, they will be launching the Robonaut 2 along with the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer up to the International Space Station. Okay, I know that was really fast. Uh, Robonaut 2 will be taking over operations. Uh, he is a telepresence robot that uh, scientists can then transmit themselves there. And uh, then the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer is there from CERN to see the anti-universe. I do believe in time travel. One month after Michael Jackson died, Everybody happened to notice that a Boston Egypt, or in uh, Chicago looked just like the King of Pop. <laughs> it wasn't just one. There were a couple of them. I mean, you might just notice that it's an exact replica. Well, this is a bust from Akhenaten's period. And, of course, it's a gift, so... Uh, 
Yeah. What are we to say? Is there time travel? Did Michael Jackson pay? I could give you a whole story on how he actually paid to travel back in time. He did not die. That was all a big show, and I wish I could tell you this story. But as I started to look, I found them announcing things like the Osiris shaft and, uh, and you know, the tomb of Osiris. So here's Zahi Hawass. You know, watch this man. He's, he's not one to be contended with. Now, here is a guy who was paid by uh, Edgar Casey's group, the Association for Research and Enlightenment, to get his degrees in Egyptology, and then he comes out and says, no, they built the pyramids with sticks and stones. And yet, he just spoke last October at an ARE conference about Atlantis, which he denies exists. But, yeah, it doesn't. And he meets up with Barack Obama. Well, this was uh, right about the point that I was starting to realize that Barack and Akhenaten kind of looked a lot alike. And uh, then we found that even the daughters as well were looking just like uh, Kanaten's daughters. These are not random Egyptians. This is a single family. And if the story is true, it turns out that they are actually, uh, well, that would be her great, 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 great grandmother. So in England, and with the monarchs, you're not allowed to touch a monarch, right? I mean, you can see their arms in both of them. Uh, this is not allowed. but unless you're family. And if Michelle is actually Queen T, then she's her great, 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 great grandmother. So it's all good, all right? Well, have a look just real quick here. And this blew my mind as well as any. I've got DVDs on this. I've got hundreds of hours online about this. And you can actually watch me discover all of this because it all happened live on the air. As I've realized that Barack Obama just might be a clone of Akhenaten. And then I got to Queen T, his mother. And this is half of Michelle and half of Queen T. I did nothing to manipulate this picture. That is her high school photo. You can do it yourself. Uh, then we found out that Akhenaten's two daughters, uh, Maritha Ten and uh, Aksunamon, and uh, well, they're identical matches as well. Then they were given names. He was known as the renegade pharaoh. And now he's called renegade as president. She's known as Renaissance, which means rebirth or reincarnation. And their radiance and rosebud, which are just to happen to be the two things that are also in the picture with Akhenaten and his children. But the truth of the matter is, is that we've got to move beyond all of the things that have been distracting us. All of the stuff that you think is real probably isn't. Uh, if things are much stranger than you think. And so don't get caught up in the illusion that they're putting on you. Do not get caught up in the illusion of uh, the politics, legislation. All of that's mind control. You are the true sovereign beings of planet Earth. And the Mayans will tell you that if you practice a set of gratitude and that with each and everything you do, with every bit of food that you eat, if you're thankful and grateful for the things that are there, if you go out and meet each people and, and share your ancestry and your histories and learn from one another, that we can uh, set aside all of the destruction and cataclysms that are coming. And we can actually transform it without all of the trouble that we're looking into right now. Okay, well, it is a dark day, and we may not know exactly what's going on, and it may just make us want to shout and scream, or we don't know, wring some necks, but the truth of the matter is, instead of shouting at everyone, become their friend. Start to realize that the friendship agenda is the only thing that's going to transform this. And start to get to know each one of these people. They're not scary. <laughs> Go and say hi to each and every one of these beings and, and find out what they're about. Because each and every one of them is special and amazing and beautiful. And we all love. And that's the critical ingredient. And once you realize that you can be friends with Satanists, Masons, Christian evangelicals, because I'll tell you, I'm friends with them all. Uh, we all get along on, on these levels. And humans are beautiful, wonderful beings. And instead of trying to beat things into people's minds, as you start to learn them, the best thing for you to do is to go out and uh, plant some seeds.